Hi everyone, it's Heidi again. If you are new here, I'm an American who left the country for the first time ever just a few months ago. And now I'm sharing my thoughts and experience with you guys. I love it so much. I'm learning a lot from you. So feel free to give your input on this video. Last time we discussed Cologne, Germany, and this time we are going to talk about Italy. For those of you who don't know, I have dreamt of going to Italy since I was very, very young. I have ancestors from Italy on my mom's side, and I've had people who are close to me in my family tell me that when they see Italians portrayed in movies or things like that, it actually reminds them of my family. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I've always felt drawn to Italy. Speaking of my family history, I would like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, MyHeritage. MyHeritage is a leading family history and DNA testing service that I've actually started using not too long ago and I'm already obsessed. Apparently they have over 19 billion records already uploaded to the site. So finding your family is a lot easier than it used to be. I'm probably actually going to be late getting this video out because I got so sucked in. I I just kept finding more and more about my family line and it was awesome. One of the things that I love about my heritage is that if you've already taken a DNA test somewhere, you can actually upload the results to my heritage so you don't have to take a second one. When our family decided to do DNA tests, we actually found out that my mom's dad is not really her dad. Like what? <laughs> Since then, she's been able to find relatives that she didn't even know she had. Through my heritage, just the other day, I was able to find out that my grandpa that I didn't know I had actually lived at the end of his life and died about two hours away from where my family lived at the time. Like he was so close, but we didn't know that he existed. Another feature that I was blown away by was the enhancement tool for photos. I used a photo that was already uploaded by some other family member probably somewhere of my great uncle. I actually knew him before he passed, but look how just amazing it sharpens the photo. I was probably moving this line back and forth for a solid five minutes. You can also colorize and animate the photos, which is crazy too. If you want to give my heritage a try, they actually have a 14 day free trial. And if you decide after the 14 days that you absolutely love it, you can use my link in the description to get 50% off of your subscription. So thank you again, my heritage and back to the video. To start, Italy was in general just beautiful. It was very green. It was really cute. It was really quaint. When we left the airport, the first thing I noticed was how green it was when we were on the bus ride. It was just absolutely gorgeous and it was exactly how I pictured it. But unfortunately, we decided to stay in one of the most touristy, non-green areas in Italy. Venice. <laughs> we did go to Padova or Padova for half a day, but we'll talk about that in a bit. I didn't think about how touristy Venice would be until everything was booked out. I loved it for about two days or so, then I was ready to move on. That being said though, Venice is really an impressive setup. Being in a city where you don't have streets, but you have canals with boats instead is so different to me. And it was so unique. I loved experiencing that. Definitely worth visiting for a short time. This city that is just completely sitting on water is a really amazing accomplishment and concept that human beings just did. And it's so stunning. Of course, let's talk about food. The food was good. The food was fine. The pasta was very, very nicely al dente. Nicely al dente. But when it came to the sauces, yeah, they were good, but I, I feel like it wasn't anything special that we couldn't get in the United States. I'm sure ingredients were probably different, but I guess I'm not incredibly picky when it comes to pasta. I just love pasta. The portion sizes though were much more reasonable and I appreciated that. The two times that we got pizza kind of sucked too. So we won't talk about that. <laughs> but Hale Hubby did get a scampi pasta that was so fun. <laughs> so when we ordered it, we assumed it was just shrimp scampi pasta, which here in the United States means it's usually like some kind of angel hair pasta with regular sized shrimp with some butter, garlic, oily sauce, sometimes lemony. And oh gosh, I love that stuff so much. What we didn't realize was that scampi is different than shrimp. It's more of a small lobster uh, and it's definitely bigger than shrimp. So they put it down on the table and we noticed that the entire scampi are intact, meaning the eyes are still in their sockets. 
we are not used to this. <laughs> so we ended up having a uh, funeral service for the scampi. We named them Jimmy and Timmy, and we talk about them all the time, actually. They will be remembered for years to come. So we said some kind words about them, and then Hail Hubby had to tear them apart and eat them. That was fun. We did have some really yummy things, though, like the, the meat with cantaloupe. I think that's very Venetian, and that was amazing. The spritz was pretty good. We had some seafood that we would not have tried and those were not bad. Hail Hubby got swordfish steak, which I didn't even know existed. So that was really fun. And I think my favorite dessert while we were there was the pan panta cotta, I think is how you say it. I need to convince somebody in my family to make it, or maybe I should just make it. But I definitely need more of that in my life. Unfortunately, we were in Italy during a major heat wave. And so it was a little more difficult to enjoy walking places Places, even though I'm usually a gigantic fan of that. It was extremely humid in Venice. Thank goodness our hotel room had AC because as soon as you walk out the door, you're just immediately wet, immediately damp. <laughs> so I ended up wearing less and less clothing the longer we were there just to walk to the grocery store or something. But it still was amazing to be able to just walk around the corner to the grocery store. I still miss that so much. So I recommend not going to Venice in the middle of July if you can help it. Something that was fascinating to me was that the hotel that we stayed in actually only had about five rooms. I kind of liked it because it seemed like the staff, they seemed very personable. It was just a really chill place to be. They had custom breakfast options that you had to message them on WhatsApp the day before to let them know about so they can have it ready for you. <laughs> It was so lovely. I had an amazing friend of mine who grew up in Italy come to visit us in Venice, and that was one of the best things that happened while we were out there. Her name is Ina. She actually reacts to things on YouTube, so definitely go check her out in the description. So a couple of times we had these kind of bigger breakfasts from the hotel, and for us Americans, it was perfect. It was so lovely. My Italian friend was saying that most of the time, at least I think the majority of people in Italy don't really have big breakfasts very often. They'll have a croissant and a drink or something like that. But for us, it was while Ina was visiting us in Venice, she introduced us to so many awesome things that I probably wouldn't have thought to try, really. She introduced us to the Italian espresso. It was the first time that I figured out that coffee could be good. I haven't been able to find a good coffee place since getting back unfortunately, but my Twitch chat did send me a coffee maker and some coffee from Finland, which is actually amazing. I hope I never run out of it, but I'll have to see if I can find some good coffee that I can maybe make myself. Wish me luck. If it's anything like the doner kebab, we have no hope. Something amazing that Ina did while we were there was she used to be a tour guide in the Venice area, and so she was actually able to hook us up with a private glass blowing and glass art tour. So it was just us three, and they they were taking us through, showing us how they blow the glass, telling us a little bit about the history of it. This part we were able to record, but then for the second part of the tour, they actually asked us to put away our cameras. They showed us and talked to us about the high quality like gold paint that they use, and we were able to see some freaking expensive glass art. I didn't touch anything because I don't trust myself. So that was incredibly special and really amazing of her to do that for us. Ina also took us to the little island of Murano. We took my first what I call bus boat over to the island <laughs> where we were able to see a ton of glass art shops. Every glass art shop had tiny little glass animals, so many different kinds, but they did not have any llamas. That was disappointing. We were able to have some gelato, which was so good. I had a lemon and a mango gelato. It was honestly just divine on that hot day. It melted quickly, but that's probably a good sign, right? From the island of Murano, we took a boat taxi, taxi boat back to the main island. And this was actually one of the highlights for me because it was just a really chill experience. The driver was really cool. I don't know why it felt like luxurious to me. It's very normal. These taxis are everywhere in Venice, but it was just fun for this little American. I do have to say though that my absolute favorite thing that happened when Ina was visiting us was when we tried, <laughs> we tried to go to a fireworks show 
in the main square. First of all, when it started, we were sitting on the wrong side. And so us and a crowd of people jumped up and like sprinted across the square. And it was a really cool view at first. It was right above the gorgeous buildings. And it was like, oh, this is Italy, you know? But then after a while, we started to notice that the square started filling up with smoke. <laughs> and eventually it got so bad that we could barely see the fireworks. I was laughing so hard. I did not know what was going on. <laughs> And it was so funny to see all of these people trying to watch a fireworks show. It was just a little bit of a disaster for a bit there. We ended up actually going out of the square into an alleyway, which gave us a really, really nice view of the fireworks between buildings. And I'm so glad that we decided to leave the square <laughs> so that we could experience that. I will never forget how funny and chaotic that was. Like I mentioned earlier, we did go to Padua, or I think it's Padova in English, for half, about half a day, maybe a few hours. It was about a half an hour train ride from where we were staying, so not too bad. It was a nice quick trip, but man, seeing the Italian countryside on the way there it was so beautiful. I want to live there. Oh. So we get to Padua and I have to say that this was absolutely my favorite place to visit while we were in Italy. We did not stay there long enough, but Padua is definitely less crowded. It seemed to be less touristy, a lot more quiet. It had breathtaking architecture everywhere you went. The atmosphere was just really nice. The city obviously was more maintained than Venice, and so it just felt a bit cleaner, smelled a bit better, <laughs> even though Venice was not as bad as I imagined it to be. It was also much less humid. It was still hot, but I could definitely feel a huge difference. Walking around in Padua was definitely where I felt that, yes, this is what I have been dreaming of doing my entire life. Like, this is where I wanted to be this whole time. We went to a beautiful park that I am so surprised was not more crowded than it was. People were just sitting there having picnics. People would ride their bikes through. It just seemed like somewhere where the locals came. And we actually talked to a worker there and they said, yeah, like this is just a really chill place and people who just live around here come here to just chill. And I'm like, I want that life. Ugh. So I ended up stepping away from my husband for just a while to uh, take videos, take pictures. He was currently talking to somebody and I ended up just kind of crying for a minute or so. I was so overwhelmingly happy to be there. And I am so glad that we took the time to get out of Venice for even just a little bit. Hale Hubby and I are both in agreement that we need to go back to Italy and visit some other places because that part of Italy was exactly what I needed. I do have to admit that the style that I was seeing in different clothing stores was not really my style though in Padua, however you say it. I probably could find things that I liked, but it was interesting seeing the difference in clothing from touristy Venice to Padua. It was definitely a lot more kind of darker colors, more flowy, which is absolutely beautiful. It's just not what I tend to wear. So we went back to Venice and one of the last things that we did was, I hate to say it, but a gondola ride. <laughs> I know it has been so overhyped. I was mentally prepared. It was just something that I had dreamed about so much as a kid growing up. I just... We had to do it. There were some things that I liked about it. I thought it was very cute. I thought it was very romantic to just be in a little boat with me and my husband. And it was very beautiful. We got to see some of the buildings close up. It was a nice slow ride so you could see the details and the buildings. That being said, it was a nice slow ride so we could see the details in not only the buildings, but in everything. When I tell you, seeing pictures of Venice and being in the middle of it in the water, two completely different things. I honestly can say that I was not prepared for how caked the walls of the canal were with just layers of barnacles. It was really quite gross. <laughs> So we got long stares at those lovely barnacles as we went by in the gondola. It was also so interesting to notice just the, I don't know if I'd call it a low quality paint job, but that's probably what I would see it as. The gold paint peeling off of the gondolas. But my absolute favorite thing that was not part of my fantasy of a gondola ride was how unashamedly uninterested the drivers were. It was so funny to me. As different gondolas passed each other, the drivers would just yell at each other. We got to talk to 
our driver a tiny bit and we would ask him questions about the buildings and the area. But <laughs> I have to say, I think at least three times, if not more, our driver answered his phone and was just on a phone call. <laughs> in the middle of our ride. That definitely took away a little bit of the magic of the gondola ride that I was imagining, but definitely an experience I will never forget. Although I would have loved to spend more time in other places in Italy, it was still a really good start. I'm still so happy that we went. I want to thank you guys really quickly for just making this possible, for all the support on the channel, for anyone who donated to the GoFundMe. Just thank you. This has been an incredible experience and I'm excited to continue my travels and my learning things outside of the United States. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe because we still have Denmark to cover. Take care everyone and I will see you in the next video. Bye you guys!